It's TK Friday, and today on The Joy of Editing, I'll be doing a full edit of an image I'm entitling Solitude in Stone. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. It is TK Friday again. Thanks for joining me again today. Today, it's going to be another full edit. Today's image comes to us from Andrew Watson. Thank you, Andrew. I'm entitling this image solitude in stone if you have an image you would like me to edit on a tk friday just go to the description of my video scroll down to the bottom and look for a contact me link click on that link contact me and we can discuss doing one of your images on a tk friday and a thanks to everyone who has already sent me images i really appreciate it and by the way if you don't yet own the tk9 plugin for photoshop you can save 15 percent off the tk9 plugin for photoshop along with training videos. Use my promo code DK15. That gets you 15% off of everything. Not only are you saving money, but you're supporting the joy of editing with Dave Kelly when you use that promo code DK15. So thank you all for using my promo code. I really appreciate it. Let's get started. I'm starting out here in Lightroom, and I'm using a linear profile for Andrew's camera, a Fujifilm X-T3 Shot at 1 60th of a second, 18 millimeter lens, f11, and 1 6th of a second. And basically what I do after I apply the linear profile to the image, I just click on auto. And then I make sure that my highlights and shadows are not clipping. And if they are, I may pull back on the whites and blacks a little bit just to keep them from clipping. And then I also, under detail, I'm using a little bit of sharpening, just the basic sharpening that Lightroom gives you, a little bit of masking and no noise reduction, but a little bit of color noise reduction. That's it. And lens corrections. I always like to check on remove chromatic aberrations as well as enable profile corrections and then I just came here to transform and click level just to level the image it was just slightly off level and that's it now at this point we can send this into Photoshop and then I would just right click on the image go to edit in and edit in Photoshop 2024 but as always I'm already there and welcome to Photoshop I almost forgot to tell you you can go ahead and download the image as well as the PDF notes and give this edit a try. Now you're going to find those links in the description below this video. Click on more to open up that description and just scroll down and you will find the links for the image as well as the PDF notes. Now, as always, I like to open up with a balance and contrast adjustment for the sky in the foreground. I like to do those separately on landscape images like this one. Now, my typical way of saving out the channels for the foreground and sky are a little bit different because of this tree right here. I couldn't get a really good separation on this tree, so I'll show you how I handled that with this image. The first thing I want to do is click this button on the combo or CX panel to select the sky so just give that a click and you'll notice in a second you'll see some marching ants appear here and you can see there's the sky but you know what I would like to include this section right here in the distant hills as to be part of the sky and I'm not getting real good separation in on this tree now I did try selecting the mask and I couldn't get it to work right for me so I'll show you the way I went around it now my notes are going to be a little different because now that I'm looking at this image here because originally I had this part selected as the sky just the way it is and then I had to go back and fix it so my notes show you how I fixed it but I'm I'm going to do it differently here. What I'm going to do in the video is grab the object selection tool, hold my shift key down, and select this little section right around here. Because what I want to do is include that in with the sky. But now what we're going to do is click this button here and we can edit our selection. And you can see right here, see the gray areas in here? We don't have really good selection in here. So I'll show you how we can fix that. Now, the difference you'll find with the notes is I didn't have this area added to the selection yet. So I'm adding it as I'm inside of edit selection. So that would be the difference. But what we want to do is come and grab a dodge tool. You see this button right here? in the edit selection section, click that. It's gonna be in the highlight mode and the exposure's at 50%. It's looking for highlights and it's gonna make them lighter. It'll stay away from shadows. So what I'm just gonna do is paint right in here like this. You don't wanna go too crazy here, but just paint this area. And we can come over in here and paint this area off as well, just like that. 
and maybe in here just a little bit more and up here. And I, I think we're good. I think that's going to be fine. And we could even grab the burn tool so we can click on the burn tool and it's set for shadows at 50%. I'm just moving my mouse over an area and giving it one click with my mouse each time I go to a different area. I'm going to grab the dodge tool one more time. I'll make the brush a little bit smaller and I just want to paint right over this area right here. That's all I want to do. I don't care about this area here. It's not going to affect anything. And now we need to save this out. So we can click the save button and we'll save this to channels. I'll just call this sky and we'll click OK. And then what we can do, see this button right here in edit selection? This is for invert selection. Click this, we'll invert the selection. And now we're going to click on save one more time. And we're going to call this FG for foreground and click OK. So now we have a, in our channels, a sky and a foreground. Now we can X right here and get out of edit selection. Now right now I do have a selection here, but the next step is to make a couple color grading layers with uh, MIDS 3 masks on them to protect shadows and highlights from clipping. So as soon as you click the luminosity button, the selection will go away. And now what we want to do is click on this button right here for Midtones 3, and that'll protect the darkest shadows from losing detail as well as the lightest highlights. That's all I'm using it for. We're going to output that to a color grading tool. That's this button right here. So give that a click. And there you can see there's my color grading tool with that Midtones 3 mask on it. Now we need to duplicate this because remember, I want to adjust the sky and the foreground separately. So let's go ahead and click this button right here. We'll duplicate it. And now we need to come back to this first color grading tool. Click on this layer to make it active. Now what we need is the layer mask calculator. And you're going to find it right here on the combo panel. You'll also find it on the CX panel. Now I have my CX panel opened up for actions. If you want to keep it open, you see the little hamburger menu right here. You can click this and it, if you'll notice like right here, auto close TK actions menu is unchecked. That's why my actions don't close when I run an action. If I would have this checked on after you run an action, it closes the actions panel for you automatically. But I like to keep mine open, by the way. Then if I want to close it, I just click this X. But you also find the layer mask calculator right here on the CX panel. But I'm going to go ahead and open my actions back up and I'll work off the combo panel. And now we need to work with the layer mask calculator. So hold your command or control key down. And when you do that and click on it, it'll keep the calculator open because remember, I'm going to adjust the foreground as well as the sky, but we're going to start with the foreground. So click on foreground and then click on X for intersect. It will intersect the foreground with that mids three mask, as you see right here. We're working on the foreground first. So what we're going to do is I'm just working on midtones and shadows. So we'll click on the midtone button. And what I want to do is open up my midtones a little bit. Now, when you slide this slider, nothing happens to you release the left click of your mouse. And I'm going to lighten this up to right here, plus 30. And I also want to warm this up a little bit. So I'm going to come right about here and give this a click. Now, you see the center of my cursor. As soon as I click this, it'll drop that center point right here. You'll watch this move up here. Right here, I'll click it. You see that? And now my foreground is warmed up. But I think I'm a little too far, so I'm going to come right to about there. Right there looks good. And now we're going to go to shadows. So click this button for shadows. And we're going to start to drag this to the left just to darken up our shadows. And this will look really nice. And I'm going to take it to right here, minus 30. Now, I just want to add a little bit of blue to the shadows. Not much. I'm just going to hover my cursor right here and give this a click. And that'll just put a little bit of blue in the shadow. So let's check it out. Here is my before. I'm just on this first color grading layer, shutting the eye off. Here's the before. And now, here is the after. So I like that. Now let's work on the sky. So click right here. We'll make the top color grading tool active for the sky. Now we're going to click on sky. Our mass calculator, our layer mass calculator is still open. And now we can click X and we'll intersect the sky into that mask, as you can see. I'll start out by adjusting midtone. So click on the midtone button on the color grading tool. And I just want to darken up those midtones to like right here, minus 15. And now I just want to color grade those a little bit. So we're going to click this button right here and we could 
pick a color tone. So I'm going to go right here, click, and then click OK. And you can see it sets my point right there for midtones. Makes the sky a little bit more on the blue side. And now we're going to move to highlights. So we'll click on the highlight button. And I also want to pull back on the highlights. So we're just going to drag this slider to the left to right there, minus 15. Now there's a little bit of tone in here, a little bit of yellow tone in here. Not much, but let's click this same button and let's pick this color right here and we'll click OK. And you can see there's that tone right there. So it just warms up that little light area just a little wee bit. Now I'm going to go back and click on the mid-tone button because, you know, I said minus 15, but here I am at minus 14. So let me get this at minus 15 just to stay in line with my notes, minus 15. And I think it's just a little bit darker. We don't need the layer mask calculator now, so we can just click the X to close it. Let me shut off the sky adjustment by clicking the I on this layer. Here's before the sky adjustment. Here's after. Now here's our overall before after button on my combo panel so we can see where we've come from. Let me go ahead and click this. Here's before and here's after. And I think we have a nice balance and contrast in the foreground in sky. And I like the color grading here. Now just a note on the color grading. If you don't feel like color grading your image, you don't have to. Just because I do it doesn't mean you have to do it, right? I just did it for more artistic reasons. But you can leave that step out if you want to. Isn't this a great scene? All these rocks and this gnarly old tree right here. It's pretty cool. Now I thought we could bring out some nice shadows in these rocky areas. And to do that, let's get out of the color grading tool. I'm just going to click the X. Nothing changes here in the color grading layers. And to darken these shadow areas, I'll do some burning. Now, I could use a burn tool, but I'm going to do something different. I'm going to come up to the multi mask panel and click this button right here. This gives us a curves adjustment layer. Now, I'm only using it for a blend mode. I'm going to change this to a multiply blend mode. But before I do that, I'm clicking this button on the combo panel to give me a black hide all mask, as you can see. And now I'm going to click this MUL button for, you guessed it, multiply, right? So we'll click this, and you can see we're in the multiply blend mode. That's going to darken everything. But now we're going to click on this luminosity mask button. And what I want to do is find a dark tone. So let's click on darks one. Here's darks one. Here's darks two. Now the light areas will be the darker areas that I'm targeting. And let's narrow that range down. Let's try darks three. Now that's a good range. And then I like to go through these different channels to see if I can get better separation. So here's red, here's green, here's blue. Now I like the separation I'm getting here in blue. Here's cyan, here's magenta, and here's yellow. And I think I like blue the best, so we're gonna keep it on blue. And now we need to output this mask. Now we already have a curves adjustment layer with a black mask, so we're gonna click this button. This gives us a black mask white brush and we're painting through a selection. You can see by my selection indicator, it's giving me that darks three selection with a blue channel. Now, right now, my paintbrush opacity is set to 100%. I'm gonna type my three key to get me to 30%. And now what I'm going to do is just paint on my adjustment. I'm just gonna paint across here. Now I'm lifting my brush when you see me stroke again. And what I'm trying to do, there's like a diagonal line that's cutting across here. And I wanna emphasize that by painting here a couple times. And then maybe back here, I won't paint as much. And I'll come on this wall back here. I'm going to try to stay away from the tree. Okay, paint over in here. Darken this area a little bit. Come down in here. This is on the corner. I want this a little darker. There's some ferns in here. I want to stay away from those. But we're going to darken down in here. Off here. Right down in here. Just building up those shadow areas. And maybe here just a little bit and paint across here a little bit more. And now let's come over to this layer and shut the layer off by clicking on the eye. Here's the before and here is the after. Again, before and after, and I like it. And if it's too strong, you can pull back in this opacity. Now I did go on that tree a little bit, so let's change over to a black brush. And I'll make my brush a little bit smaller and I'll just paint it off this tree right here. Just like so. Okay, so let's check it out. Here's the before and here's the after, and I like it right there. The next thing I want to do is work on the foreground saturation. Now, right now I do have a selection, but that's not a problem because as soon as I click on this saturation vibrance button, that selection will go away. Now, I'm looking for weaker colors, so we're going to work with vibrance. We have saturation and vibrance. So let's click on vibrance 1, vibrance 2, and generally it's going to be vibrance 4 most of the time. Vibrance 3, vibrance 4, here's vibrance 5, and I think vibrance 4 is going to get me the 
weaker colors that I want. I'm just trying to bring up weaker colors, but only in the foreground, by the way. So here's what I'll do. I'm going to click on this mass calculator button in the multi mass panel, and we're going to click X for an intersection. And then we're going to go and click on my channels and we'll click on foreground because we want to work on the foreground. So click on foreground and now we'll click equal. And now you'll notice we have that vibrance mask right there only in the foreground. So now we can output this to a hue saturation adjustment layer. And all I want to do here is pull up my saturation. So I'll take this master slider and you have all the different colors you can work with here. But I just want to work with master on this. And it's targeting just the lower saturated color. So we're going to pull this to the right. But I'm going to come up to right about here, like plus 37. Now check it out. Here is the before and here's the after. But see how it just brings up those weaker colors. And if you want more, you can bring it up more. But we're going to leave it there for now. The next thing I want to do is just bring up the blue a little bit in the sky, the blue saturation. So to do that, I'm going to use a color mask. So we'll click this button. And we're going to click like right here. This represents that tone of color right there. Let me click OK. And then we'll just take this slider and we'll drag it to the right just to lighten that up to somewhere right about there. Now we need to output the mask. So click this button to output to a hue saturation adjustment layer. We're only targeting blue. So I can go ahead and keep this on master. And I just want to increase the saturation to right here plus 40. And I can also use this lightness slider and darken it a little bit that sky to like a minus three. And now let's shut this layer off. Here's the before and here's the after. Just a minimal adjustment, but I think it helps. And here's our overall before and after button. So let's click it. We started out here and now we are here. So far, I really like the direction we're heading. The next thing I want to do is add contrast only to the midtones. This can be a very beautiful adjustment. So to do that, we're going to come and click on the luminosity mask button. We're going to click on midtones one, click on this button to output to a curves adjustment layer. And then I'm just going to make an S curve on here. So I'm going to come in the highlight area and pull up on the highlights. Now, remember, we're only targeting midtones. And then I'm going to pull down on the shadows. But see that nice midtone contrast we get in there? Really nice. Let's shut this layer off by clicking the eye. Here's before the midtone contrast. And here is after. But isn't that beautiful? I really love this adjustment. And if it's too strong, you can always pull back in the opacity, but I like it. The next thing I want to do is bring out some nice detail in this foreground area. And to do that, we'll use the camera raw filter. Now, what I'd like to do is take the image in as a smart object. Now, if you hold your command or control key down and click on this button right here, what you'll do is stamp all your layers together and turn that into a smart object. And now we can click ACR to go into the camera raw filter. And we're going to adjust some adjustments only in this effects area. If you're not finding these sliders here, maybe you don't have effects open. Just look for effects and click on effects and you'll open it up. And I'll work with texture, clarity, and dehaze. Now we're going to start to pull up the texture and see that nice texture popping out there. I don't want to go too crazy here. I'm going to go right to here, plus 19. And now we're going to go to clarity. And we'll start to drag this to the right. Now, I don't want to go too far here either, but a little bit can go a long way, like plus 15. And now dehaze, it'll pop the contrast and pop the color slightly. Uh, I'm just going to come up a little bit here to like a plus four. Now, you could click this button right here and see there's the before and there's the after. Now, I only want this to go onto the foreground. We're going to click OK, and I'll show you what we do. I'll come to my combo panel and click this button for the layer mask calculator. And then we're going to click on foreground, and we'll click this button to apply that as a mask right there. Now, check it out. When I shut this off, it's only on the foreground. Here's before. And now here is after. But now we have that nice little detail boost in the foreground. I like it. Next up, I want to add a vignette, but only to the foreground area, not the sky, because I will close the sky off after I do the vignette. So come to your TK actions. If they're not open, click your TK button on either the combo or CX panel and then click on vignette. And now your Gaussian blur dialog comes up and I always take the radius just the way it is. Click OK. And now... I'm at 30% opacity. I'm going to increase my opacity to 40%. And right now, if I shut the vignette off, here's the before and here's the after. But right now, it's going over the entire image. And I only want it on the foreground. 
So I could come and use my trusty layer mask calculator. So we're going to click this button on the combo panel. I'm going to click on sky and we'll simply click minus to subtract the sky. You see that? And now I'll shut this layer off. Here's the before and here's the after. Now it's only on the foreground. And now what I can do is just to protect my darkest darks, I'm going to come up and get my edit blend if by clicking the edit blend if button and then I'm gonna click on no darks one and that'll protect my darkest darks. I'm gonna X out of the uh, edit blend if and now again, here's my before and here's my after. Next, I wanna close off the sky. Come up to the multi mask panel and click on this button right here to get a curves adjustment layer. Again, I'll use a multiply blend mode but first I'm gonna put a black mask on this layer by clicking this button here and now when I click the multiply button, this button here, you won't see an effect here. But once I add a gradient and we're going to click on the gradient button to get a gradient. Now make sure you're not using classic gradient, but the new gradient tool, the live gradient. So that's gradient it's called. And then in the drop down, make sure in basics you have this third block check for black to white. And then make sure it's in the reverse mode. See right here, you can see white and black. And if I uncheck reverse, you'll see black to white, but you want the opposite, so click reverse. And make sure you're on the first button here, so click this first button for linear gradient. And now all we need to do is draw the gradient. And so what I wanna do is like click right here and start to drag down. Now, see how it, you can move this and change the angle? If you hold your shift key down, you can constrain that line as you drag it and I think it's like 15 degrees when you move it, but they're straight right there. And I just want to pull it down to somewhere right about in that area right there and then release the left click of my mouse. And then we can adjust this. I call this like a window blind. You know, you can see that, you know, and I want to pull this down to somewhere right around here. Now it's getting into the tree and the effect is too strong. So what we're going to do is come over to this layer. Right now the opacity is at 100%. I'm going to pull this down to 50% or actually around 56 right there. Here's the before and here is the after. Now if you don't want to see this line, you could click on the curves icon and now we can see here's the before and here's the after, but it's on the tree and I don't want that. So we can take care of that. I'll come to my combo panel, click on my layer mask calculator button and I will click on foreground and click minus to subtract the foreground. If we look at this layer mask, you can click the double arrow icon there and you can see there that tree is subtracted from it. Pretty nice, right? And now I'll click this double arrow again and we can see it back. And again, I don't want to see that line there. So I'll click on the curves icon. And now here's the before and here's the after. But it just closes that off nicely. And I just want to close the very top portion off like a double closing here. And it'll look nice. And I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to come up to the multi mask panel, click on the curves adjustment layer. And we'll put a black hide all mask by clicking this button on the combo panel. We're going to click this button to put this in a multiply blend mode. Now we still have to use a gradient. So I'm going to click on my gradient tool and now I'm going to click here, click and start to drag down. But this time I'm going to still hold my shift key down to constrain this, but I'm only going to pull it down to about right there, release my left click and then I can kind of adjust this, but I only want to darken off the very top like that. Now let's click on the curves icon so we don't see the line and that's way too strong. So we're going to take this opacity, take it the whole way off and then just build it up slowly till it looks really natural and I think you know right around well, I'm at 40% there on my notes I have it at 30% I'm going to let it a little stronger here 39% I like that let me shut this layer off here's before and here's after but see how it just closes that very top off now I just have one thing to do I just want to tone down this light area right here and we will be done let me show you how to do that I'm going to come up to the my channels button on the multi mask panel and give that a click and then we're going to click on sky and we're going to use a mass calculator so we're going to click on this button right here we're going to click x for an intersection so we'll click the x next we'll click on the luminosity mask button we want to target just light areas right now we're on lights one here is lights two here is lights three and here is lights four and lights four really hits that area right there and now we can click equal 
and we make the calculation and you see we're only getting that area right there. Now we just need to output it. And for this, it's simple. All we're going to do is output this to a brightness contrast adjustment layer. So click this button on the multi-mask panel. And all I want to do is take the brightness back. And it's only going to target that area. You see that? Now you can see as I pull this back, the warm tones in there get a lot more saturated. So what I want to do is pull this back to minus 44. And the yellows are a little bit yellow. Not much. Not really bad. Here's the before. I'm going to shut this layer off by clicking this eye. There's the before and there's the after. To get rid of this extra saturation in here, it's very simple. Just change this blend mode from normal to luminosity. And we can do that very easily by coming to the combo or CX panel and clicking the LUM button for luminosity. And now we're not getting that yellow saturation boost right there. Now let me shut that layer off and look in this area right here. Here's the before and here's the after. But see, it just tones this light area down. So we're not being pulled here with our eye as much. We can take a look at the overall scene. But there it is. Now we can take a look at the overall before and after by clicking this button on our combo panel. The before after button. So let's click it. Here's our before. We started out here and now we end up here. So there it is. I really love the way this edit turned out. Thank you, Andrew, for letting us use your image. This is a really great scene. And I hope everybody out there gives it a try. Don't forget to download the image and the PDF notes. Well, there it is, everyone. Another TK Friday comes to a close. I hope you enjoyed today's full edit tutorial. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon and click all so you receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.